Hi, here's a little example program that I've put together to show how we can use this comparison tool in our PLC programs. So you can see I've got a timer set up here, and this is a timer that's designed to do a little bit of a loop operation. So as soon as it turns on its output when it's finished, then it turns off its input and it just goes round and round in a circle as long as that, uh, that first input is active. The comparison that I've got down here in the next line is looking at the value of that timer. So as the simulation's running, or if you're writing on a real PLC, you'll see another number come up inside the box here, which is the actual value of the timer that's changing sort of as it um, goes every second. So the comparison lets you check if, how far through that process you are, and you can turn on an output or do anything else that you like when you get to a certain point. And we can do a similar thing with a counter. So I've just set up this counter with a couple of inputs in here. And down the bottom, you can see I've got the comparison instruction there with the counter as well. So I'll just run the simulator and we can test out how these things are working. Okay, so now we've got our simulator going. Move that one out of the way. And when we turn on that M0, you can see that we've got the new number showing in there that's going up and up. And our comparison here is waiting until it gets higher than number seven. Here it goes. And then the output turns on. So if you want to, you can rewind and watch that bit again, but it's gonna happen again in another few seconds. Four, five, six, seven, it doesn't go on. Eight, it does go on. So that's because we've used a greater than comparison in here. Now if we look at our counter down here, that's got a value of zero so far for its progress because I haven't clicked any of the input at all. And with a comparison down here, I've said if it's less than or equal to two, if that value of the counter. So if I click this a couple of times, so there our value of the counter has gone up to two. And you can see down the bottom here as well, it gives you kind of a, a progress indication. And because I've used the less than and equal to comparison, then the output is still active. We go one more. Then we've got a value of three in the counter. And it tries to say down here, if three is less than or equal to two. And yeah, obviously it's not. So that one then turns off the output. So still with this counter, you can keep going. It's got a preset of 10. So if you keep clicking the input more and more times, then eventually that output there is gonna turn on connected to that D, D for done. Um, so that's a little example just really quickly with how we can use this comparison instruction. Um, you can see in here it's got two different, slightly different sorts of names. So when you insert a new one, um, typically I'd be typing into the first box down there. I'll just exit the simulator and show you what that looks like. So if we make a new rung underneath, and here's our comparison block. So you can see this one's got two spaces here that you can type things into. Um, so I'd recommend using this one that says comparison slash operation expression. So the expression part is where you're referring to the address of the timer or counter. So that's gonna be percentage. Uh, if it's TM for timer, number zero, or if you've got number one, number two, number three, whatever you're working with. And just be careful that you do use the number zero instead of the letter O. It's pretty easy to mix those ones up, unfortunately. Um, this one, we can say if this is less than or equal to, and let's go with five and hit the enter key. So it's not happy in there because I forgot to put in one piece, dot V. So you can use a small or a large uh, uppercase V. Here we go, now it's happy. And because I already named that timer, then it creates that into the first line in there. And we can simply plug that one into a new output. And then we'd have another comparison that we can use to to set up something that happens while the, in the beginning part of that timing sequence. So from zero up to five seconds. Uh, one thing to watch out for with the timers is in here with the configuration, 
we've got um, one second as our step and 12 was our preset. So those two combined obviously make uh, 12 seconds in total. If we change this to go here, so this is still making 12 seconds in total, but it means that the counter is, oh sorry, the timer is working with um, numbers that are much higher. So if we did have our timer configured that way, then our comparisons, our comparisons don't actually use um, real values of seconds. They just use the same type of numbers that the timer itself is using. So we'd have to make that 70 to be equivalent to seven seconds. So something to watch out for um, as you're doing some practice with these ones. But hopefully this quick little video helps you and you can rewind and build these programs yourself to test them out. See you next time.